Tonight, I'm going to show Chris Saban what the pucker one is all about. I am Darren Burridge, the pucker one, and it you shall This episode of That's Classic Burridge, we're going back to 2005, the SFX Theatre, Dublin. Myself going on against TNA superstar Chris Saban. Um, this is the first time I've ever wrestled um, a TNA wrestler, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. One of my favourite matches. Please enjoy. Shit, Colin making his way to ringside. He will be our special guest referee for the remainder of the evening. One of the greatest wrestlers in the history of British wrestling. <laughs> jewelry he's wearing. Nice yeah. show of sportsmanship before this matchup gets underway. And this crowd on the edge of their seat for this one. Chris Saban against Darren, the Puka one, Burridge. <laughs> this match, one of the most anticipated matches on this entire card. Collar and elbow tie-up now. Into the wrist lock. By Chris Saban. Saban, as I mentioned, currently competes in NWA TNA in America. One of the, one of the most well-known names in the States. Nice arm drag counter there by Burridge into the armbar. Saban now gets back to his feet, attempts a roll through. Two-time TNA X Division champion. Nice takedown into the cover by Burridge. Not even a one count. As both men get back to their feet. And a great show of respect here. That rank there perhaps going up. Break a Roman knuckle lock. I would suspect that Burridge will have the advantage here in terms of power and strength. He's slightly taller than Saban. And looks to be a little bit stronger as well. But we're gonna both men evenly match here at the moment. Nice drop, to, drop down by Burridge and the single leg pick up. Nicely done. And now Burridge with a hold of the left leg of Chris Saban. Now into the waist, the uh, leg lays. Saban attempting, attempting to get out of this hold any way that he can. And a leg drop right across the face. Nice counter there by Chris Saban. This crowd looking on intently at this matchup. Single leg takedown, nicely done. By Burridge. And Burridge content to wear down the left, the left leg and knee of Chris Saban as this capacity crowd comes alive for Chris Saban. Nice cross arm breaker here applied by Chris Saban attempting to wear down the left arm and shoulder. Up to Aaron Burridge. Burridge attempts to counter and does, goes into the front face lock. Nice spinning toe hold counter there by Saban and he rolls with it. Nicely done, he's got the legs of Burridge locked up and this is what Saban's gonna have to do. He's gonna have to take down the larger Burridge and wrestle him on the mat. And again, a tremendous show of respect here by the crowd in the SFX. 
for the wrestling ability of both these guys. Another tie up into the armbar. And a nice one legged monkey flip there. By Darren Burridge, the Pokemon who maintains control over Chris Saban. into the side headlock, this time by Darren Burridge. Burridge certainly with, with the power edge, as I mentioned, going to work with that headlock. Top wrist lock counter and into the headlock by Chris Saban. And a re-counter there by... A re-counter by Darren Burridge. No wedgies, no wedgies. Into the headlock of his own. And as I said, he's got the pipes to really go to work with that headlock as we see him grind it in there on Chris Saban. Saban certainly feeling the effects of that and a lot of people don't actually realize how painful a hole that can be, the side headlock. The most elementary move perhaps in wrestling, but one of the most devastating. A snap bear takeover by Burridge. And now into the reverse chin lock. And this is bringing double advantage for Burridge. And now he let go of this, the reverse chin lock. And oh man, vicious. European style uppercut by Burridge. As he goes back to maintain control with that standing side headlock. Burridge now off the rope, shoulder block. Taken down Saban. And a nice Oklahoma roll into a reverse sunset roll up. Two count only, beautiful wrestling move. By Dare, the Puka one, Burridge. the Berserker. <laughs> Burridge, nice arm drag, deep arm drag takedown by Chris Saban. Double leg pick up by Burridge. Counter to the roll up by Saban, beautifully executed, but two count only. Burridge now in control, trying to get Saban up, and he dumps him into the roll up, but... In the blink of an eye. Another test of strength here by both guys. Oh. Wrist lock. I save an Irish whip. Beautiful modified hip lock takeover. Burridge hooks the leg and gets a two count. That was a beautiful offensive maneuver. Modified hip lock takeover by Darren Burridge on that last exchange. And again, another vicious forearm European uppercut right to the face of Saban. You could feel the impact of that one. Front face lock by Burridge. Into the vertical suplex, nicely done. Another lateral press by Burridge. He hooks the leg this time and gets a two count. Saban, one of the toughest individuals in the entire sport. He's not gonna go down, he's not gonna go down too quickly. He's not gonna go down that easily. Double reverse chin lock now applied by Darren Burridge as this crowd comes alive. Saban is back to his feet. Grabs a series of elbows to the midsection. Off the ropes, up, 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 coming up perhaps. Can Saban get the powerful Burridge over? It doesn't look like he can. Burridge countering with a nice top wrist lock. Right there checking Chris Saban to see if he wants to submit, but I don't think that word is in the vocabulary of Chris Saban. Saban uh, attempting to counter. And springs out of it and a beautiful base, baseball drop kick right to the face. What a shot that was. Four. And now both men down on the canvas and the referee must exercise his 10 count. Saban quickly getting back to his vertical base. The Irish whip is reversed to the center of the ropes and a vicious clothesline by Dara, the Puka one, Burridge. Chris Saban feeling the impact of that. And again, the momentum that Saban was attempting to build has been taken away from him. And it, a beal right over the top rope, but Saban showing tremendous athletic ability, holds on. And a slug 
best developing there in the apron, but that was cut short by a vicious shot to the face by Burge. Sunset, power bomb to the outside, perhaps. But no, Saban, hammering away on the head of Burge, trying to counter, and he does so. Over the top rope, here comes Chris Saban. And now Saban hammering away with those vicious stiff forearm shots to the back on the outside, but Burge trying to come back. And a brawl ensuing now on the outside of the ring. What a vicious series of knife edge chops. Both men laying in the leather here. These guys laying it all on the line. Darren Burge thrown back into the ring. Saban now, showing tremendous strength. Scoop slamming the larger Darren Burridge. And a beautiful somersault headbutt right to the gut. I would be very surprised if that were to occur. occur. And what a devastating drop kick that was right to the back of the neck. There's another cover, two count only. Irish whip into the corner by Saban. And a close line in the corner. Saban, beautiful butterfly suplex, nicely executed, there's another cover, and for his feet gallantly, and Burridge likewise, both men now moving in, a slugfest developing, and I would suggest that Burridge would have the advantage here, but it's Saban who's coming back, unbelievable, you can hear the impact of those tremendous forearm shots, and it's Saban who's getting the better of it, off the ropes he comes, Burridge now, Taking Saban down to the canvas to work on the left arm and shoulder of Chris Saban in the hammerlock. Let's roll through by, by Darren Burridge. And he's got Chris Saban tied up like a pretzel. Look at how the leg is crimped behind the neck. No, no. Burridge also with a hold of the left, the right, the left arm of Chris Saban. What a devastating submission hold this is, and I wouldn't be surprised if Chris Saban were to submit here. <laughs> Saban trying to counter this. And Burridge releasing the hold. And another vicious forearm shot, and you can see the contact being made there. I wouldn't be surprised if Saban has a few loose teeth after this match. A trip to the dentist may be in order and a questionable boot to the midsection there by Burridge. Oh! Inverted atomic drop. Oh! And a beautiful by Chris Saban. Puts the leg. Oh, two and a half count only, almost a three count. That's about as close as you can come without a three count right there. Chris Saban signaling for the end here. No! Up goes Darren no! Burridge. No! Burridge counters with a sunset flip. And a drop toe hold, nicely done. By Darren Burridge, and a German suplex into a bridge, two. No, two count only. Now back into the corner. Irish whip to the far side. Oh my goodness, a spinning heel kick to the gut out of the corner by Saban. Burridge does it, right hand. Nonetheless, tornado DDT. Burridge was just spiked on the canvas. There's a cover, and no. Burridge, to his credit, kicks out. Showing tremendous toughness. Another Irish whip here by Saban. Burridge escaping out of the corner here. And now, in control, Leapfrog. These two guys. Nice roll up. One, two, and he got it.
I remember for a good six weeks counting the days down to this match and really training hard for this match and it was something to really focus in on and really push myself to the next level. Um, it was the first time that I'd ever wrestled a TNA wrestler and it was a big, it was a big thing back in 2005. Um, and to wrestle someone with such, who was in such high regard as Chris Saban. Chris Saban was the best in the world at the time, easily in the top 10. Um, it was a big thing for me and it was a kind of proving point for me to show the world what I can do. And also it was my debut match for Irish Book Wrestling. So I had to prove to Irish Book Wrestling and the fans that I could deliver what everyone had heard about. Um, Irish Book Wrestling at the time was actually voted the six biggest in the world under Dragon Gate. Um, it had a lot of uh, momentum behind it. Um, I went in there as the head trainer in 2005. I'd moved from London to Dublin to take on the head trainer role at the Irish Book Wrestling School. And it was, it was the first time that I had to prove to the guys that I could deliver. So if I failed, and I, I had a bad match, you know, it was, it was a lot of pressure on me to, to go out there and do it. I might have lost my job, I might have been sent home back to London. So it meant a lot for me to go out there and show these guys that I can hold it with some of the best in the world. That show was probably one of the biggest shows that Ireland's ever done. It had so many great names on it. You had Seamus going up against Charlie Rage. You had AJ Styles, Christopher Daniels. You had uh, M-Dog 20, uh, Johnny Storm, uh, Jody Fleisch. Uh, a lot of great top level names at the time were on that card. I just came back from Thailand and I basically got loads of, loads of, uh, loads of, uh, ring gear made. So I had the bird, I had the, the trilby hat and the big jacket. This is about the same time when the crowd in England were, were, were labelling me the king of the chavs. So I kind of run with it. I was w worried a little bit about a possible styles clash because Chris Saban wrestles a very high impact, high flying style whereas I was doing a very traditional world of sport, ground based technical style. Um, but watching that match back I'm really happy and proud about the pace. The pace was very slow and methodical, with little spikes of action. Um, and I think my style really complemented uh, Chris's style. We gave the crowd a very uh, unique match, very unpredictable match. Um, and it made for, for a very entertaining uh, 20 minutes of wrestling. Looking back, I would have changed the finish of our match because I think with the pace of the match, it was too, uh, it brung them down too much. I should have finished on something a little bit more high impact. Uh, maybe got done the Ross Abbott spot and then hit something else. Maybe the Chavlock finish, maybe something else. I don't know, maybe something more high impact. But if I could do the match again, I think I would change the structure towards the, towards the end of the match and do something a little more, a bit more high impact rather than just do a roll-up, which is what it was. It's a modified roll-up, the Ross Abbott, as we call it in Britain. One of my trademark things at the time was to go hoo hoo with the crowd. Um, and one of the crowds started chanting it and Chris Saban thought they were chanting for Jimmy Jacobs who did a huss huss kind of thing. So you see at one point in the ring he questions, you know, the, the hoo hoo. He does the husk husk. And uh, I just thought it was perfect timing to give him the hoo hoo. And, then, and then the chaff shuffle as I called it. I really wanted to do a powerbomb spot. I kept thinking and visualising me vaulting over the top ropes and hitting his powerbomb. Um, so yeah, I think that was that was my idea. <laughs> Out of everything that happened in this match, the one thing that I'm the most proud of is actually the, the turn into the drop kick. Because um, I was kind of testing myself whether I could kind of get the timing exactly right for him to hit that drop kick just as I did that, that 360 turn. Um, and it worked really well. The chab lock and the tarantula roll. Um, and that was the first time I did it, and to this day, I've used it in every single match, and it's beaten quite a lot of top-level wrestlers. Now, as well, I, I thought I prepared really well for this match in terms of cardio. I remember having a bike, and I was riding it all around Ireland, all around Dublin, and it's bloody windy in Ireland, so it makes it harder. Um, and I thought my cardio was on point, and you'll see right towards the end of the match, he, he's, I send him into the corner, and I follow him, and he hits me with, with, with the kick into the, like the mule kick into the stomach. And I'm absolutely blowing my tits off trying to get to the other side of the ring, just walking. Um, yeah, so I thought my cardio was good, my cardio was absolutely shit. And um, it was a big thing for me to win that match. Like I said, it was the first time I'd ever wrestled a, a top level independent wrestler, a top level TNA wrestler. So uh, I did feel a lot of pressure. And also, the crowd, I mean, they had every right to boo me. In fact, they never knew who I, never, they don't know who I am. I mean, I wasn't on 
uh, TNA television. I was on the wrestling channel now and then, um, but I was just a fairly unknown name. Pretty much people only read about me from the internet. But um, I was really happy with the reception I got, being it's my debut in, in another country as well. It was a big thing for me to pick up the, the win against Chris. Um, and it was one of my favorite matches that I've had, to be fair. On a, on a personal note, this, this match has a lot of sentimental value for me because when I first started wrestling, and I remember we did a match for Brian Dixon at, uh, at, uh, at Red, Red Hill, Surrey. And it was myself, uh, Sticks, Ross Jordan, but basically we had a tag match and uh, we stunk the place up and I remember Jake the Snake Roberts was there backstage watching us and Dean Allmark, was wrestling Dean Allmark and uh, we got chewed out by Dean for, for being crap basically, you know, in our like second ever match we've ever had <laughs> and uh, Chick Cullen was one of those guys that chewed us out as well for, for basically not being good enough and um, I made it my personal mission, if it was to my last thing I ever did, prove to Chick Cullen that I could wrestle. That had been my personal goal since four years earlier since that happened to us at Red Hill. Um, so to get Chick Cullen not only to referee this match, that was my chance to prove to him that I could wrestle. And um, after the match he congratulated me on, 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 on how well I did and he said look how far you've come since the last time um, I met you. And it was such a big thing for me to get his respect because Chick Cullen to me is one of the greatest of all time. Um, so it meant such, it was such an honour for me, not only to have that appreciation from him after, but to have him referee that match. So it was a very special moment for me. Thank you for watching this episode of That's Classic Burridge. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for the next episode of That's Classic Burridge. Darren Burridge.